In this video, we're taking a close look at the FlashForge Creator Pro 2, an FDM printer with independent dual extruders and lots of nice features. Stick around for the details. So here we go. I've been wanting to share this printer for a while now and finally got the chance to do just that. So without hesitation, let's dive in. If you've been printing for any time at all, then you're probably familiar with FlashForge. Established in 2011, they're one of the first professional 3D printing equipment and materials companies in China. Now ranking number three globally in the consumer 3D printing industry. They make well-designed printers packed with features. And the Creator Pro 2 is no exception. With dual independent extruders, a heated bed, and a closed chamber, it supports just about any filament you may throw at it. What separates the Creator Pro 2 from its competitors is its independent extruders, allowing for creative use of dual heads and multiple colors, soluble supports, mirroring, duplication, and dual material models. To cover all the details, we'll start with specifications, then get into functionality, and then look at its performance. The printer is reasonably sized with an external dimensions of 526 by 360 by 550 millimeters and weighs in at around 33 pounds. While it'll still fit on your desktop, it will require a dedicated space with access to the back of the machine in order for you to change the filament spools. Spec-wise, as mentioned before, the machine has two independent geared extruders with 0.4 millimeter nozzles. The max extruder temp for each head is 240 degrees Celsius. The heated bed has a max temp of 120 degrees Celsius, which makes it good for preventing warp on some of those more exotic filaments, as well as uh, bed adhesion. Print speed is capable of 10 to 100 millimeters a second. It has a print volume of about 200 by 148 by 150 millimeters, which isn't huge, but it will fit a modestly sized print. It natively supports PLA, PVA, ABS, HIPS, PETG, and TPU filaments, which offers a pretty wide array of options for the more advanced creator. Layer resolution is 0.1 to 0.4 millimeter with a print resolution of plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. With a 3.5 inch touchscreen on the front, power connector and switch on the back, and SD card and USB port on the right side, you can print directly to the machine or it can print in an offline state, reading from the SD card. But I will point out two features that this printer is missing, unlike its little brother, the Adventurer, is a camera and wireless connectivity. What? While those aren't absolutely necessary, it's a bit convenient feature to be able to manage your print remotely. Okay, functionality. This machine has a similar boot up and menu system as other FlashForge printers, with the menu system organized into three main categories. Print which allows you to access the contents of the SD card, select a file, then print it. Pretty basic functionality. You can stop, pause, or adjust a few settings during the print. Things like change the filament, stop an extruder, adjust print speed, and Z access to compensate for bad prints. Back on the main screen, there's a preheat section that allows you to warm up the extruders or build plate. This is useful for releasing prints or cleaning your nozzles. And finally, there's a tool section, which is where all the important stuff is. This is mostly wizard-driven activities that step you through the process of further simplifying the interaction with the machines. The filament tool will walk you through loading and unloading materials in either of the two extruders. Level walks you through the process of leveling the bed. It's a step-by-step -step process that gives you on-screen instructions throughout the activity of each axis of the machine. There's a home button that simplifies homing the bed and all extruders. There's a manual button which gives you complete control of the movement of each of the extruders on any axis of the machine. But one thing worth mentioning is that although the extruders are independent, they share their Y and Z axis, which prevents you from moving them completely free of each other. Now this isn't a big deal as none of the advanced modes of the machines would benefit from that feature. But if you wanted to get advanced and independently control the extruders, then you need to keep that in mind. There's a settings button, which allows you to calibrate the X, Y, and Z axis. Again, walking you through the step-by-step -step process. There's an advanced section that gives you complete control to tune the settings manually, as well as set the language and do a factory reset. What's next? We have a status button, which will also allow you to change the color of the internal LED lights. And lastly, an about section where you can check the device specs, firmware versions, and that's about it. So let's dive into printing something. To do that, we'll need to prepare and slice a model. The FlashForge software is called FlashPrint. It can be downloaded from their website and provides basic functionality to add models, move, rotate, scale, slice, and then assign extruder behavior. You can assign extruders to specific models used for duplication or mirror modes. 
or even process activities. For example, while you're setting up your multicolor models, you can tell it which extruder to use on each model, as well as when you're slicing the object, you can switch over into the advanced parameters and tune the extruder settings to identify which extruder to use for a raft or support and elements of the design. While the software does handle all the basic features and capabilities well, it's limited as to how much you can customize the slicing parameters, possibly to keep it simple and prevent bad prints. Also, I believe while you may be able to use alternate slicers, you won't be able to connect directly to the machine to print your sliced model. You'll still need to transfer the sliced model to the machine via SD card. That said, with the sliced model in hand, I insert the card, load the design, and the printer does the rest. The printer is relatively quiet at 55 dB, while my shop's ambient noise is around 46, so it's not much louder than the ambience. The enclosure helps with that. Once the print was complete, looking at the model, the printer did a pretty good job. This is PLA and the calibration is pretty good. The wipe towers also did a reasonable job at keeping the colors from contaminating each other. All in all, pretty good results. One unique aspect of the Creator Pro 2 is it has these, these special wipe pads that the extruders rub up against to ensure that there's no ooze from your extruders when it's idling. I did a couple other prints to try alternate use cases and for example, this tire and wheel is PLA and TPU, giving it a hard wheel with a soft tire. This is about the closest example of an instant purpose built object with a good use of a dual extrusion to create a single object and without any modifications. While the printer does a pretty good job, I rarely use FDM for its surface quality. When I want something that looks great, I'd recommend using a resin printer. While the process can be messy, the results will always be superior to FDM. All in all, I'm mostly happy with the capabilities and quality of the machine. Its filament compatibility and functional simplicity makes it a real tool that requires minimal tuning to get great print results. I'd consider this a mid-grade 3D printer with some advanced capabilities that you won't find on most printers in its class. I'll put links in the description so you can head over and see FlashForward's full line of printers. Even if this machine doesn't meet your needs, they have lots of other models ranging in price and complexity. And now let's look at a few other prints. All in all, I think these prints turned out well, they were easy to remove from the bed, and the print quality looks great. Again, a clear delineation between the two filament colors without cross-contamination. That's probably attributed to a pretty good slicer, well-tuned for this machine. Well, that's going to do it for today. Hopefully this review is useful and gave you a glimpse at a pretty neat 3D printer that holds its own in the shop. If you'd like to support the channel, there are lots of ways to do that. For starters, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. It'll keep you in the loop on future updates. Or if you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that sharing this stuff is useful. Leave a comment below if you have questions about the printer and check out my DIY engineering website if you're so inclined. Lots of stuff over there. In the next video, we'll be circling back on the heavy robotics camera gimbal arm. In addition to that, we've got another batch of Arcator handhelds that will be milling bodies from different materials and even a vacuum form body. So that's cool. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.